The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rose. Now, Steve Rose. Now. Welcome to the June 9th, terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who ab absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure that we have an extraordinary one. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift out there, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go look at the circumstance of these markets. What the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free. And now it's not too soon to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Of course, internationally seven two seven four four five ten forty four. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. We'll see if it's going to be a turnaround Thursday. There, uh, this is of course Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now we have the Dow trading down fifty two points. He's trading out at seventy nine fifty two. S and P down seven at twenty one twelve. Nasdaq Composite off twenty one twenty one. That's trading out at forty nine fifty three. Russell two thousand off eight points. Trading at eleven eighty. DAX closed off 128 points. FTSE down 69. Gold is up about $11, $12.73. Silver's up 30 cents, trading at $17.28. Light Sweet Crude back 80 cents right now, trading out at $50.43. Lead the charge here to the upside. You got JM Smuckers. Let's have some peanut butter and jelly. That's up $9 and change. That's up 7%. AEP Industries, that's up about 8%, $4.70 out there. Brain salad surgery, intuitive surgical, up about four dollars, a little less than uh, half, or about a little bit more than a half percent. Vail Resorts, up two and a half percent. To the downside, the dollar leader is Priceline, off sixteen dollars, a little over one one uh, percent. AGO's Pharmaceuticals down fifteen percent, it's off ten dollars. Chipotle, down about eight bucks, off uh, nearly two percent. Restoration Hardware down twenty percent, and that is off seven. But the first question that you want to have answered, well, I assume. That the first question you want to have answered is, okay, top, no top, retracement, support, where are we at inside the market? So let's go ahead and answer all those questions to the best of our ability. Let's uh, start off and take a look at things, you know, one step at a time, kind of like a checklist. This is not necessarily the checklist in order, but this is the checklist that as of 1.09 p.m. lets us know who is in control or what the market has done. So the first element of that checklist, let's go take a look at the advanced decline oscillator reading. Well, first I have to click on the correct tab out here. Let's take a look at the uh, decl S, advanced decline oscillator reading. That happens to be in the very bottom panel of our chart out here. Uh, the first panel on the left si left hand side is the New York Stock Exchange out here. And as we take a look at it, we can see that it is what? It is above zero. See a nice gap down this morning, trading towards the bottom of its trading session. But the message here is still that buyers are in control of the New York Stock Exchange. In the case of the NASDAQ Composite, its oscillator reading, advanced decline oscillator reading, is above zero. 4818 is the current number. Therefore, it is also above zero. It says buyers are still in control. In the case of the Dow, which really should be the first one down through the zero line, because it had been weak out here, it's also got a positive reading. Its reading right now is 0.84. It is above zero. All three of those oscillators as of 1.10 p.m., taking a look at the advanced decline information, uh, is telling us it's a difference between two moving averages, that oscillator that we're taking a look at. It is telling us that it is buyers that are in control. Now let's switch over and take a look at the VIX index. In this case here, though, let's just go take a look at the actual VIX indice. We know that the 50-day exponential moving average, it is a key line for both you and I. That is the line that is drawn in the sand that you and I pay attention to more than we do anything else when we take a look at the VIX index. Why? Because we know two things. 
When the VIX index trades above the 50-day exponential moving, that's where the most carnage can, be, can occur inside the market. When the VIX index is below the 50-day, the market basically does two things. It moves sideways, and that's what today's move is thus far, or moves higher. Now, the number, this changes, you know, in almost tick by tick to a certain extent. But the number we're looking at is 1494. I think it was 1495 this morning. So it's not changing that much. But call it 1494. And the high today so far has been 1485. So the, and it's trading right now at 1457. So the VIX index, ha, although it's moved higher, it's still trading below that 50-day. What does that mean? That means that the, the way I take a look at the VIX index, quite frankly, I mean, it's, it's, it's not necessarily its intended use, but you know what? It's always nice to try to take a look at a tool or indicator and find a way that you can use it. And the way that Stevie uses it is basically says when the VIX is below the 50-day exponential moving average, it tells us there's plenty of liquidity. Liquidity is what makes the markets go higher. And when it gets above that level, liquidity starts to dry up, and that's what starts to move the markets lower out there. So we've looked at four gauges at this stage as of 112-ish right now, and they all say that it is still the bulls that are in control. Now, this can change in a heartbeat, but right now our heart is beating, and it is saying that it is buyers that are in control of the market. Okay, now let's go take a look at the NQ which has been uh, struggling out here. And let's look at it on a couple of different time frames. The first that we're going to put up here is the daily time frame chart. Now, as we turn over to this charting tool, you're going to see a red line. This is a red line that you absolutely want to pay attention to. This is the red line that come next Tuesday, I'll be doing a, a workshop on this, plus, of course, some other goodies that will be thrown in there. This is for all my newsletter subscribers. And this is a tool that you want to use and trade with. So whatever it is you're trading, whatever it is you're looking at, you want to know what the value of that line is because this is a key level of support that if broken, okay, could spell double trouble out here. Now, coming back and testing support or on, a, uh, uh, on an equity, on an indice, on a stock that is moving higher, nothing wrong with that. Likewise, something that's moving lower, coming back and testing resistance, what do we call those things? Right? We call those just simply retracements back to levels of support or resistance. It's one of the things that we can call it. In this case here, that price point, by the way, is uh, 44 99 out there. And, and, and yes, intraday price got below that. But this is going to be a real end-of-the-day indicator. So if you close below that level of 44 99 uh, 46 right now, so you're going to have to give it a few shekels, um, you know, that would, be a, that, would not be, that would be a neutral to bearish type signal out here inside of the NQ. At this stage, though, what we know is prices come back and it has tested support. Why are we taking a look at the NQ? Because if the market is going to fail or if the market is going to move higher, it's really going to be all about the NQ. I know you're probably tired of me saying that, but that's just the way that it is out here. You see, if we take a look at market profiles as an example, in this case here, it's a daily chart as well that we're looking at. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you've got the NQ. Upper right, you've got the ES Mini S&P. Down in the left, you've got the Dow Futures. Down in the right, you've got the uh, you've got the Russell 2000. We've been trading sideways since, uh, quite frankly, May 31st inside the NQ. That is not the case with the other equity futures contracts. Price has also come back and tested the daily point of control. It's a kind of a congestion zone, as well as the weekly um, bottom of its box out there. Things here are still bullish. When we get back. Let's go look at the 30-minute charts for the NQ. We'll be right back. Folks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so as we took a look in the first segment, we were just looking for clues, right? The, all, the market is always telling us a story. Your job, my job, is just simply to be the narrator of that story out there. And that way, that's what allows us to shift gear, shift from being uh, bullish bias or bearish bias, right? We, we just simply are going to check opinions at the door because our opinion doesn't mean diddly out here. And instead, we're going to look for those patterns that help us identify tops and bottoms, who's in control. If you can do those things, that's part of what it is that we'll be doing on uh, next Tuesday evening. You, you, you have so much more control of your game. And that's really what it's about. I wanted to be able to teach you how to uh, get more control and understand and be able to read these markets out here. Now, if we take a look at the 30-minute chart here for the NQ, you're going to see one of our favorite patterns, right? We, we check our opinions at the door. We let the market communicate what it's doing for us and what was the NQ doing. On its way to trying to complete an A to B equals CD down, it got stopped by doing what? By moving lower and doing it with what? Less relative strength out there. Whenever the market does that or starts to give us that signal, the hair on the back of your neck or your chinny chin chin ought to start standing up because it's telling you if you're short the market, it's telling you, okay, time to uh, tighten up a little bit, you know, a little, little, uh, little smuckers, whatever it might be. And then even, let's just try to keep this thing on, 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 on tap here. And so price was moving lower. Uh, when the cavalry arrives, which is what was taking place as we we're coming on the air at 1 o'clock. It's now 1.20, and that's the session that we're in. This next candle that we're in ends at 1.30, and the cavalry arrived. What do I mean the cavalry arrived? Well, we know that uh, the, the responsibility of the uh, market participants, bulls and bears, is to check into the office each day and do nothing more than draw candlestick signals for you and I. Now, those candlestick signals, a lot of them don't mean diddly, and they especially don't mean anything prior to a pattern completing. They're just kind of like, eh, it's kind of like, you know, it's like it's if we wanted to sell a book, you'd have to have maybe a two, three hundred page book out there. And so this is just some filler out there. But when it's completing at or near the end of a pattern out here, that's when we pay attention. And that's what's taken place so far in the NQ. 
So we know in the NASDAQ composite on its cash indice, the advanced decline loss hitter above zero. On the daily contract for the equity futures contract, prices come back to test the level of support. While it was testing that level of support and getting the uh, trampoline effect that we're seeing here, what was it doing? Moving lower, doing it with less relative uh, weakness out there. And the bulls have arrived. Now the key is just simply for the NQ, at least with regard to its 30 minute chart, it's just simply to close above the 4511 mark. Why 4511? That happens to be its tag daily profile now what else does it have to do in order for a turnaround Thursday to truly take effect? Well, let's go ahead and explode up the NQ. This has got the daily. Looks like I also have the weekly uh, TAS profiles on this. We're going to go ahead and turn off the daily for the time being just so that we can because we're really focused. I'm hyper focused on the 30 minute chart. I want to be able to give you the answer. I also had the weekly out here. So let's take a look at the 30 minute charts out here. And I'm going to turn off price too just so that we can uh, get a uh, so now all we're looking at are the different market profiles let me just hit my uh, update key and just make sure that this is updated with everything there we go so you can see that the current market profile that we're in right now see how that dashed red line was closer to the bottom remember price was moving lower we already know this we covered this in the last chart price was moving lower doing it less relative what less relative weakness out there and you also have this box here lined up lined up to benefit who? The buyers. Now, prices above that 45.11. If this was a, let's call it a, a buyable bottom out here, then what we should see is a brand new market profile appear at some point in time. I don't know if it's going to be this afternoon or it's going to be this evening, but you will see a new box um, appear above this prior box. Now, it just means that the low needs to be above the prior low, which is 4503, and the high needs to be above the prior high, which is 4511. Then that starts to give us more of a change in trend signal. Now, where is that that price can go to? Good question out there. That takes us all the way back to the daily. Because when we take a look at the NQ out here, as we said, for the last seven or eight trading sessions, it basically has done nada. Not a darn thing. Where can price take us to? The real simple thing is price can take us to 453875. It is still the same number we talked about yesterday, which was Wednesday, the same number we talked about on Tuesday, the same number we talked about on Monday, probably the same number we talked about on Friday out here. So it is the 453875 that still is etched in stone, written in stone. Now, what happens if coming into the close today? Everything just fails and price heads lower. The number that you really want to be paying attention to, and let me answer Michael's question, who um, uh, who was asking about the Qs, but he was also talking about the NQs, a subscriber inside the newsletter. But uh, with regard to the QQQs out here, because I think that's what he was asking about, I've already given you the number for the NQ. In the QQQ series number, what you'd be paying attention to is 109.85. That's the oscillator unchanged line number out here of 109.85, and that is a key level of support. We can see it was tested. We can see that it's been rejected, and that's what you'd want to watch. If, in fact, you saw a close below that and you were long, you might say, you know what, neutral might be better. You could even take the aggressive stance of going to a, a short position. But there's no other topping pattern that is out here at the moment, which has me believing you've got to pay attention to those other elements that we looked at as well. We've got to understand where the AD oscillators are for the New York Stock Exchange, for the composite, for the Dow. Where's the VIX trading relationship to its 50-day? Um, you know, there's just a, there's a, just a handful, it's just a handful of items that you want to make sure you know where you're at inside the market to be able to give you some type of clear signal. Now, we've talked a lot about the NQ because it's the NQ where we it's the real juggernaut. If we were going to pay attention to the ES Mini as an example, well, then we understand why prices found a little bit of resistance. Let me go ahead and make sure that everything is updated here. What you're going to see, ah, what's trying to form out here, that's interesting. So what's trying to form inside the ES Mini is a brand new daily box. And it's trying to form at a higher level than the current TAS market profile out there. So that is also short-term bull. So that's an interesting message. We can see the same thing inside the Russell 2000. It formed a brand new market profile above the prior one. And by the way, when this profile formed today, price is already above it. That's super bullish. So the message here with regard to the Russell 2000 is it wants to continue motoring along, being in first place out here, isn't interesting, isn't interested in drafting anybody. It's running its own race. 
Series, and it's just kind of saying it's waiting for the NQ to basically, I guess the NQ is doing is getting filled up with gas. It's changing its tires. It's adjusting its wing. But that adjustment's not going to be complete until we see price clear 45, 38, 75 out there. Now, we haven't talked about the ES Mini as much, and we pr probably ought to, right? Because what we've got here is a little bit of synergy. Synergy from the standpoint inside the S&P futures contract, what was happening? Price was moving lower. It had been moving lower, began moving lower at 11 o'clock. It did have the Calvary showed up, a uh, little piercing candle on a scale of 1 to uh, 10. You know, we'll give it about a, uh, a 2 with regard to uh, strength. However, uh, the one that we'll give on a scale of 1 to 10, maybe like a, a 7 to 8 on the Stevie Richter scale, that's what showed up at 1230. That was your bullish engulfing candle out here. So, um, you know, a definite bounce, perhaps even more, is in store for us. So uh, this looks like, at this stage of the game, it looks like turnaround Thursday, price got stretched to the downside, did it inside the ES, did it inside the NQ, didn't do it inside of the uh, Dow. Uh, but the Dow and the Russell, they're doing pretty well without, without, without any help from me. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back.
back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 31 right now. S&P is off uh, four. So we know we've on the 30-minute chart here, we've got some uh, your typical nice, not typical, but your nice bottoming type pattern. We know that we've seen price in some of the indices pull back to uh, key levels of support out here. And as long as those levels uh, hold, you've got a market that wants to move sideways to uh, higher out here. And we're in the same position that really we were yesterday. We're just waiting on the NQ. Let's go check in on a couple of the uh, issues inside the NDX 100. Let's go see what Apple is doing here today. So you've got Apple that is uh, trading a bit higher. Apple is uh, trading out at 99, what was it, 99, 91 as we speak. And it looks like it is on its way up to its uh, TAS daily profile high. That happens to be priced at 100.73. Now, volume behind uh, Apple today is uh, 17 million shares. The last time that price was up here was 56 million shares back on uh, May 26. So it's not going to have that type of volume. Nonetheless, it could still take out that high, which is 100. 100.73. And if we were to do so, then it says that in the case of Apple wants to at least go repair that open window, which is get up to the low of the trading says from April 26. That's where Apple gapped down from and that low being 103.91. But you've got Apple on the move. Um, we've got uh, stocks like uh, Facebook uh, that are in the top 10 holdings. Let's take a look at Facebook. Facebook just simply consolidating up at these highs out here. So there's nothing that looks uh, bearish about uh, Facebook. Amazon, AMZN, let's go take a look at it. Uh, there's nothing that looks uh, bearish or troublesome really here with regard to uh, Amazon. At least nothing that I see at the uh, moment. Uh, you've got, uh, what do you got, uh, Comcast, maybe CMCSA. All right, that's a part of the. Uh, what do we have out here as we look at it? No problems that I can see here. Let's take a Microsoft. So you got the, your biggest issues are Microsoft, probably right. So in the case of Microsoft, um, you know today it has in essence trading down just slightly. Price tested the uh, bottom of its TAS daily profile. Uh, so, it, uh, which is 51.49. If it holds that, then we're really inside a range from about 51.49 up to about the uh, 53.06 level out here. Volume today on the pullback, 9.3 million shares. Last time it was pulling back, it did it with 24 million shares. So we're light volume today. And then 23 million shares on June 30th. So you've got, in essence, a light volume retracement or pullback to a level of support inside of Microsoft. Let's uh, just check in on Google. We, we could look at good, too. I don't know what that Gladstone commercial. Uh, as long as that came up, things happen for us. Um, uh, Glad I will go take a look at Google in a minute, but Gladstone Commercial, that's ticker symbol G O O D. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. That's good out here. Um, and of course, they probably already knew that it was good. That's why they went with the ticker symbol good out here. Um, if we take a look at what it's doing, it's got a little swing point out here from the trading day of uh, May 26, 138,000 shares. Today, you're up with uh, 82,000. So it looks like it's about on par with the uh, volume. This ought to run into some initial resistance at 16.17. Now, let's go take a look at Alphabet Soup out here, uh, Google, which is trading higher. So uh, maybe the NDX 100 is sending a message to us that it's uh, getting ready to uh, get its legs up and going. Now, in the case of Google, its legs getting up and going ought to take it to a, a price level of about 736.17. Um, right in that 736 area uh, is real strong potential resistance. That's where the sellers are camped out in Google. And if, in fact, price can overcome that area and then overcome 739.73, it also has an island top out here. Yeah, it's got an island top. And uh, all that it has to do in order to repair that island top is get back to the uh, low and close above. 749.55. So we'll want to go ahead and keep an eye on the uh, googly one out there. Okay, let's go take a look at uh, the commodities. Let's go take a look at the uh, gold and silver out here. Uh, everything's still coming to fruition with regard to gold, what our expectation was. When we took a look at it yesterday, I suggested to you that uh, gold would likely give up this descending trend line, that we would see price move up towards the top of its uh, weekly market profile before it gives us any kind of signal. Looks like that is really what is going on here. 1286 is that number. So far, the interest session high has been 1276. Seventy-four. Um, I should have uh, gone to take a look at a shorter term uh, chart out here. Let me see if I can do that. Well, I know I can do it. I'm just trying to do it efficiently and effectively while we're on the show on the air. So let's see if this pops up. I'm just looking at a 30 minute chart out here for Goldilocks and uh, that didn't pull up. That's a bummer. Why didn't that pull up? Oh, there we go. Okay. Now I've got it up here. I would just really I don't see any kind of reversal pattern. 
nothing that uh, pops out at us, so we won't even uh, go spend any time taking a look at that any further out here. If we go take a look at... Um, Go take a look at Lightspeed Crude, right? We had a caller yesterday calling it about Lightspeed Crude. We were talking about a couple of different levels on 30-minute charts and on daily charts. In the case of the daily chart, what we were looking at, I believe he was looking for a potential pullback to 49 bucks. Um, that's still, we'll look at a shorter-term chart as well. On the daily chart, that says, okay, uh, game on for that, which is really the top of its rising price channel. It's secondary. Now it's the bottom of really its second rising price channel out here that could be forming, as well as the top of its daily box, which is 48.97. If we switch over to a 30-minute chart, and we also well, let's do this here. Let's turn off the uh, uh, the daily and weekly profiles. So let's do that out here. Give me uh, give me a moment to do that. So we'll turn on the 30s, and we'll turn off the uh, daily boosters and the weekly boosters out here there we go now we'll change this to a 30 minute chart and let's see what this uh, shows us so in the case of light sweet crude we can now see so one of the things we talked about yesterday so this was a uh, right around 1 or so when we had that conversation and we can see we were looking at this uh, current 30 minute box out here which was in a bullish configuration uh, it said to us that as long as price could get above it looks like about the 51 ish area price ought to move higher that's in fact what happened in a new box formed out here once uh, the uh, time frame of six o'clock this morning came into being that was when we began seeing price closes below the bottom of a 30-minute uh, TAS market profile order. That was telling us, okay, that the trend was tired and we were going to see something else take place out here. Now the level to be watching in order for price to move back into that 49-ish area is now going to be, you can see how these, we've had now two successive 30-minute profiles. Let me just turn off price here. See how these have formed below the prior one. So it's really giving us information that the trend has changed. Unfortunately, the profile that we're in right now, it's really equal distribution between the bottom and the top of that box out there. As we turn price on here, nonetheless, if you get below 50.31, that says you're likely headed back down to a lower level. And I would be looking for the daily market profile to act as the support area. Again, the number for that is... Johnny, uh, I think it's the top of the box out there. Let's see if I can put that on the chart out here. There we go. 48.97 would be the uh, magic number, and that is in light, sweet, crude. Let's take a look at some of these equities here that are moving. How about uh, Smuckers, J.M. Smuckers and Company? Are you a jelly person? Are you a jam person out here? Me, not so much out there. Nonetheless, they, they produce more than uh, peanut butter and jelly, don't they? Yeah, of course they do. They got to. But if we take a look at uh, J.M. Smucker, well, that is a 30-minute chart. Let's go take a uh, look at the daily time frame. Just and uh, let me go ahead and turn on those uh, turn those profile time periods back on for both the daily and the weekly out here and what we're going to find is that nice gap up holy toledo what did uh, jm smucker do today what is driving uh, this this is uh gapped up with volume somebody buying this what are the, what's the deal here uh has surged to new high not just on earnings 1.8 billion dollars worth of strawberry jelly versus 1.45 billion from the prior year that's selling a lot of jelly out there steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
FNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, kind of a very choppy market out here today. Uh, you got 35 point, points of the downside inside the Dow S&P back five. So really, we've seen here no damage done to the markets. Price is just coming back to levels of uh, support. We've seen some uh, bottoming patterns on the short term. Time frames out here inside the NQ and the ES out here. We'll see if those short-term patterns hold. We were taking a look at uh, uh, J.M. Smuckers uh, and Company, which is up uh, $10 today. Big volume behind the move, 2.5 million shares, which we're at is big volume. As we take a look at its monthly chart out here, and uh, I was doing a, taking a look at some other charts offline. Uh, just see if I could find, you know, is this thing stretch? Is it moving higher with less weakness? Anything along those lines? And the answer is no. So, uh, you know, it's got several A to B equals CD patterns that are out here on a monthly basis. Uh, the most recent uh, swing point in essence that I was dealing with was 10 million shares back here in August of 2013. And when price got over that level, it was 22 million shares. That was back on February the 1st out here. So um, everything looks uh, long and strong for um, JM. Uh, Smuckers and company. Let's take a look at the monthly chart that was just up on the screen. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at Vale Resorts. MTN is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, let me see what uh, what did I just do there? What did I just do there? Interesting. Okay, um, so you have Vale Resorts. They were out with the numbers here. Uh, four dollars uh, earnings per share for the third quarter, four twenty-three versus three fifty-six. The revenue was six forty-seven versus five seventy-nine. Out here, this stock chart looks pretty good as well. Take a look at this. Nearly everyone inside holding uh, MTN as a ticker symbol is in the uh, money. So there's a big party going on in uh, Vale, and why not? That's a great place. Now, if we take a look at what it's doing today here. It's uh, dealing with a, uh, well, how about this? It is up and above a key level of resistance that was inside this equity, which was a high volume high, uh, bearish engulfing for sure, mm, potential key reversal, if nothing, uh, at least an outside day. And it was a doozy. It was a million shares back on March 10th. Now, on that trading session, prices went to what looks like a new all-time high and then went ahead and gave it up. Uh, and, of course, that level right now today is being tested. That was with a million shares, and today you're at 464,000 shares out here. Nonetheless, as long as price closes above that high, 135.98, 135.98 ought to become the new support level. Price above our TAS weekly and daily profile, so everything looks pretty good in uh, Vail. And why shouldn't it? I mean, we're talking 
We're talking a beautiful place. Let's look at Sanderson Farms. Let's go cook some chickens out here. Uh, I don't know what else Sanderson Farm does, but uh, certainly in the uh, in the uh, chicken business out here. Now this here today. Let's see if we can. Is this a eh, is this a complete? Yeah, it looks like it is. Uh, it's got a buy the D point. If we take a look at our A to B equals C D patterns out here. What does Stevie mean by that? Well, your A point of the lightning bolt pattern, uh, that took place on May the 9th. That's the high. Then this makes a low, nice little hammer candle. You never like to see it close below a hammer candle because if you're long, you're wrong. And that was on the trading session of May 18th. Uh, moves higher up in the resistance of its TAS weekly profile. And that was on the trading day of May 26. It's now completed a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD to the downside. Today, you've got a key reversal and a bullish engulfing candle. So uh, Sanderson Farms today has given you a Gertley buy pattern. What do I mean by that? I mean, this has had a nice strong trend off of the October lows in 2015. Pretty much been a, a one-way-ish type move with some stair-stepping. So a little stair-step exercise going on here. And you now have a, a Gertley buy pattern. As far as I can see since that October time frame, it is the first Gartley buy pattern that has formed inside of that trend. So things look pretty good inside of Sanderson Farms as far as H.M. Gartley is concerned. What else needs to happen now? Well, in order for this thing to really start looking groovy, it needs to get above its weekly and daily, its current weekly and daily TAS market profile lows. That could be resistance. And that's in the price range of 86.80, 86.40. If it gets above that, price ought to move up to 90. 39, maybe back to 93, 98. A question, if I would go take a look at a different Vale Resorts out here, this would be in Valley, I believe, V-A-L-E, Valley of the Dolls. This is moving lower, doing it with a little bit of conviction here this morning or this afternoon because you've got volume of 26 million shares. This made a high yesterday with 35 million shares. I don't have my calculator handy, but in my mind, that says you're coming down with a bit more volume than you were up with yesterday. Uh, this is also pulling back into where there was 42 million shares um, from just a few days ago, back on uh, June the 3rd. So you've got a brand new daily profile out here. Let me see if this is a true one or if it's just forming. And it is a real one. So if you are in this valley or veil, uh, however you pronounce it, somebody ought to just tell me. Uh, and uh, this says this ought to have support at 446. Brand new daily market profile. This profile biased is to the uh, bearish side out here. But that just says that price ought to pull back into this 446 to uh, 457 level, like ale. Thank you, Mike, or Mitch in Boston. So it is a veil, like ale out here. That is a perfect way. Man, what a great... Uh, now, if veil, like ale... Closes below 446, and you're looking for a price move back to 373. That's the weekly TAS market profile. I hope that that helps you out, Danny, in a hot Atlanta. Uh, what else do we want to take a look at out here? Let's look at uh, let's look at uh, advanced auto parts. Let's go see what we have out here in AAP. AAP is uh, trading up advanced auto parts with uh, about a million shares behind the move, going after a recent swing point out here. That recent swing point took place on the trading day of May 27th. That had a million shares. Oh, this is trying to take out a swing point with volume. So today's volume, 1,047,000 shares. The swing point is contending with is a million and 75,000 shares, so surely it's going to, surely, or surely, whichever you like to prefer, is going to try to take out that swing point. Any close above 157.76 today, and you're going to have a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. Now, it's going to find a little bit of resistance, PS data resistance, at the 161.02 level. That happens to be your TAS market profile high out here, but if it can clear that, then what you're looking at is you're looking for a smoother ride up to the 173 to 180 mark. Let's go take a look at a, a week Weekly chart, see if there's anything else that this thing is moving into. Yeah, so it's got some uh, resistance certainly up here at the price point of about 165 or so. So what was the A to B equals CD? Is it still out here? 165, I said. Uh, so 165 to 173 is where advanced auto parts should run to if it can clear. 157.76. Uh, anyone in the den want me to take a look at something, just go ahead and post in the uh, ticker symbol, and I'll be happy to uh, put my eyes on it. Hey, big movements in the currency marketplace uh, today. Get big movement inside the U.S. dollar index. That's up 425 ticks out here. U.S. dollar index is saying thank you, but no thank you out here. We're taking a look at this descending price channel. 
that the U.S. dollar index broke out of back on the trading day of May the 18th out here. It breaks out of it. Uh, we saw that uh, Janet Yellen Schmellen uh, numbers, maybe it was Jobs Friday deal. I think it was probably Jobs Friday deal. And that was on uh, June 30th. Big wide rangey bar coming back to test that uh, trend that price had broken out of. For the last three trading sessions, it has traded within that session in that area, so to speak, out here. But right now, what we are seeing is that it's trying to get back above that descending price channel. What does that mean? If we were to take a look at our market profiles, it would say that the price ought to bounce to about 94.40. And then anything above that can run all the way back up to its highs in the 95 area level. You've got the Dow off 38, S&P down five points. When we come back, we're going to go take a look at, um, looks like we're going to take a look at EXK. Um, can I look at Platinum Futures? Uh, I think that's about it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got the uh, Dow, uh, what is it, down about 55 points right now. S&P is off eight. So let's go take a look at a couple of things that... Uh, have been requested. Uh, hey, I watched. Did you guys see the uh, movies? Uh, Thirteen Hours came out on uh, mm, Directv two nights ago, so I watched it two nights ago. Went ahead and watched it again uh, last night. If you haven't seen the movie, it's a great movie. You, you should absolutely see it. Boy, does it make you? Does it? You know, I didn't get a chance to serve our country. 
not like my best friend John did in uh, Vietnam and then uh, the stories and what he had to, uh, you know, survive and, and move through uh, guys like Tom. Um, you know, that, that served our country. You know, it certainly just uh, always brings things back and makes you proud to, to know those guys, to know what, uh, you know, they had on the uh, line to be able to rub shoulders and, and uh, you know, just simply what, what they gave up or will, were willing to give up out there uh, just makes you, be, makes you feel proud. You know, to just know guys like that. And, uh, and it makes you feel just the opposite with regard to all of our politicians that are out there or, you know, that were in political office, um, especially during that uh, time period out there. So go watch the uh, go wa it's a great movie, absolutely great movie out here. So go watch it. And Dever Silver is uh, one of the uh, so thank you to each of you that have definitely served our country out here. Let's take a look at uh, Endeavor Silver. EXK is the uh, ticker symbol out here. As we take a look at this, it's trading a bit higher this morning, volume behind this afternoon, 1.5 million shares out here. Uh, what is this uh, trying to do? It had a little gap down. Here's your resistance levels inside of uh, this equity. Let's turn our profiles off because then you'll see them more clearly. We'll go take a look at where this thing had gapped down. And that was on the trading session here. Let's get a line on it, which right here on the trading day of, well, it was May 6th. It was the trading day of May 9th. And had volume there behind that uh, gap down move of about 2.6 million shares. So that is where it is targeting its move, next move to. It looks like 390 or 373. If it can get above that level, Endeavor Silver ought to go ahead and make a run for the April 29th level. Had a request to go take a look at uh, Platinum Futures. Let's go look at that. Platinum's trading out at about 1,004. This is the uh, July contract out. Out of here. Here's the daily uh, chart that we're looking at. Uh, let's see if this uh, populates with our TAS profiles. There we go. Boom. It does. And you can see that at this stage of the game, Platinum trading between the range, trying to break out of the range, which is between 953.50 and 1015.20. Uh, uh, that happens to be its weekly market profiles out here. You can see that that area acted as resistance yesterday, has as, has as well today, 1015.2. If it can clear that level, um, there's no uh, real pattern out here that would suggest anything other than going and testing the swing point for May the 3rd, somewhere between 1065 to 1092 out there. So we got that. What was the, uh, the dollar? Question about horizontal trading range boundary lines, if I had those for the U.S. dollar index. So let's go take a look at it. You're looking at the three panels on my chart. The left one is the monthly horizontal trading range boundary lines. The uh, center one is the weekly, and the right panel is the daily. So if we take a look at those, let me just try to get this and uh, get a feel for commonality out here and if we take a look at uh, commonality so to uh, speak you can see that the uh, US dollar index uh, got it up got up to uh, to it's a monthly uh, horizontal trading range boundary line that was 9979 what that is folks that is a horizontal level which can be support or resistance. 99.79 was resistance. This would suggest 90.79 is where price would pull back to inside the U.S. dollar index. That's the monthly chart. The weekly says about 93.19. So watch that level next. And the daily chart is saying 91.35. So the one I'd be watching on any type of continued retracement is 93.19. Hey, folks, thanks so much for being here on Terrific Thursday. What a great lineup we have for you. We've got our polar bear, David White. He's up next to Tom. O'Brien show from uh, three to five and Andy Heck to take it on home from four from uh, five to six. Have a great Thursday. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com 
under trading newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.